There are a great many things I talk about that I am in absolutely no way an expert. However, there is a small number of things, tiling being one of them, that I would consider myself an expert in. Since the first day I've been on Linux, I have been using tiling, and I've made it very, very clear in the past that I think tiling is just a better workflow. The main reason most people don't use it is they don't want to configure a tiler, which is absolutely understandable. Now, a lot of people fail to realize when I say this that I don't actually care what your workflow is. If you think something else is better, that's okay, use what you want to use. This is not a value judgment on you as a person. It is just a computer workflow. It is okay to disagree with people. Now, putting that aside, today I want to talk about KDE Plasma's so-called tiling. Now, if they are going to use the term tiling, I am going to criticize it in the context of tiling. That doesn't mean it's all bad. All bad. <laughs> there are some things that are good about it. Now, before we get into that, I just want to talk about how it works first. Now, I can't speak for every distro, but for a clean install of Plasma, it should be enabled by default. If it is not enabled by default, go into your system settings, desktop effects, and search for tiling editor. This by default is bound to the meta T. If you want to bind it to something else, go ahead and do so, but this is the only binding you need to know about. So if you press meta T, super T, windows T, whatever term you use for it, it is going to open up this. This is your tiling editor. Now, if you have multiple monitors, it is going to be opened on all of your monitors at the exact same time. Now, the minimum number of tiles you can have on a monitor is one. I think that's because they just don't want to add an add tile button. It really doesn't matter. This works just fine as it is. So with our single tile here, we can either choose to split horizontally, split vertically, and I'll get to the add floating tile in just a bit. And if you don't know what horizontally and floating means, there is an icon here that shows it as well. So if we do a split horizontally, we can have these two splits here, and then we can split each of these independent of the other. So I can add a vertical split here. I can add another horizontal split here. I can then say vertically split this one and then vertically split this one. And you can very quickly start making a custom layout. Now, maybe you don't like the size of some of these tiles, or maybe you just don't want some of these here as well. So we can also go and delete a tile with the delete button here, or we can resize a tile by dragging the bar between them. Now the floating tile, I think is a really neat concept. This turns this split basically into a predefined floating area. So we can go and modify these the same way we can modify all the other splits. I can have this one be here and maybe this one over here. And also we can then go and split this one as well. So we can have this be two horizontal splits and then have this one be two vertical splits. And when we do that, it actually turns them back into the regular splits we saw before, but they now exist outside of the regular layout. A really weird design choice with this is once you split a floating tile, it doesn't act like a floating tile anymore. These are now the regular splits we saw before, so they can't be resized in the same way. They're now connected to the other ones, and apparently sometimes they just completely freak out and start overlapping other ones. I've not seen that one before. This one is actually completely broken. I can't click on any of the buttons because now it's technically below these other ones, so I have to delete these ones, and then I can delete this one. That's obviously not how that's supposed to work. My suggestion is if you make a floating tile and then you split it, what should actually happen is you should get two floating tiles that both still act like floating tiles, and then that problem is just not going to happen. That is obviously a weird edge case situation that most people are just not going to run into. To be fair, most people probably aren't using floating tiles in the first place. Now, the other thing you can do is also change the padding between the windows. Personally, I like it to be at four pixels. Okay, so when we are done, we can either click on the background or we can click the escape key and then exit the tiling editor. But how do we actually use the layout? So let's spawn a new window and it's not gonna be placed in the layout. Instead, what you need to do is hold down the shift key as you drag, and it's going to try to place it into each of these splits. Let's say we'll use this one right here. We'll make another window, put it over here, another window over here, so on and so forth. 
if you resize a window when it is in one of the splits, it is going to resize it in the tiling editor as well. So now we can see over here, this one has been dragged over here. If we go and resize this one, this split is much smaller as well. As an initial proof of concept, this is fine. I'm not going to say good because I actually have some problems with the way it currently works as well, but it is fine. But any of my tiling viewers may probably know what I'm about to say. This is simply not tiling. This is at best a clone of Windows Fancy Zones. Now, that is okay. If you like the way it works, go ahead and use it. But it is not tiling. Now, I've had people try to explain to me how it is tiling and all of these different things. Let me just explain some tiling terminology. So, manual tiling. People have said, oh, Plasma is doing tiling, it's just not automatic tiling, it's manual tiling. That is not what manual tiling means. Manual tiling is what i3 does, where the user manually picks the layout of the windows. So in i3, there isn't some sort of like internal layout algorithm or anything like that. The user always manually picks the split direction of the windows. That is manual tiling. That is in opposition to dynamic tiling, which is what things like BSPWM, Awesome WM, Hyperland, and a bunch of others do, where there is some sort of internal layout algorithm that decides automatically where the windows are going to be placed. However, it doesn't matter how the windows are laid out, a key concept for it to be tiling is that when you spawn a window, it is placed into a tile. If it is not placed into a tile, it is by definition not tiling. Again, what Plasma does is fine, but let's not go and actively disappoint people by pretending what Plasma does is tiling. With all that in mind, let's talk about some ways this system could be improved. Starting with improvements that just make sense and I don't understand why they aren't there in the first place, going all the way up to full-on proper tiling. I don't know how many times I've been told about, hey, if you press super and then the direction keys, it will put the windows into these splits over here. Well, you might notice something. Uh, they don't actually work. It is splitting the windows, but remember the layout we made. So the quick tile bindings don't actually respect the tiling editor. So those bindings don't work properly. They are in a stopgap and make things work in a pleasant way for me. But they don't respect the tiling editor, so they kind of lose a lot of their value. One thing I didn't show you earlier is this load layout button. It does exactly what you'd expect. It loads a different layout. But you might be wondering, where's the save layout button? If I make a layout like, I don't know, this for example, how would I save this? Well, you don't. That's the thing. I have a feeling it probably works internally in a similar way to panels. So you can define a panel that you want to add in a JavaScript file somewhere in Plasma, but there's no convenient way for the user to easily go and do so. Also, load layout just doesn't work properly. So here we have three windows currently in a layout. If I go and open up the editor, Go and open up the editor, press load layout, and go to another layout that also has three splits. What you might expect to happen is all three of these windows to be moved to these new splits. Let's see what happens. So, one of the win- Okay, this is actually new. One of the windows is half full screened, like three quarters full screened, but it's still technically in a tile. Both of those are in a tile, and then this one is a full screen tile but none of them were put into the layout properly. So it clearly doesn't do that migration in a way that makes sense. Just imagine for a second that we have a layout like this. We press a hotkey, then all of the windows instantly migrated to another layout. That's almost a tiling feature. Now, the way window rules work in Plasma is generally pretty nice. I have a question though. Why can't I go and window rule based on on a tile or based on a split, whatever term you want to use. It just doesn't exist as an option. Maybe there is an extension that I don't know about, and if there is, 
let me know. But to the best of my understanding, this is not possible. Again, let's imagine for a second that we have our windows like this. And then we spawn a window, and because we have a window rule that says put it into an open tile, it does this. It's very, very close to actually being tiling. Now to make that work in a way the user would expect it to work and in a consistent way, you should be able to go and number these individual splits as well. So say this is one, this is two, and then this is three. And then in the window rule, you can say, I want to put into the next open as opposed to just put it in any open. Obviously have both of them there as an option as well, but it gives the user control over how they want the windows to be placed. Another really big thing, different virtual workspaces should be able to have different layouts. So this is workspace one. If we go and make a split here, if we go over to workspace two now, and we open up the tiling editor, it has the exact same layout. These should be independent, or they should be shared, depending on what the user wants to do. Now, stopping at this point would not make what Plasma does tiling, but it would get it very, very close and will give developers basically all the tools they need to actually implement tiling using Plasma as a framework. The very final thing that Plasma would need is dynamic layouts. And maybe you could replicate this by just loading different layouts as you spawn new windows, but properly doing dynamic layouts would be a better way to handle this. What I mean by this is if we have this one window, if we window roll it into a tile, it's basically going to go full screen. It's not going to actually be full screen. It's just going to take up the entire workspace we have here. Okay, now if we spawn a second window, both these windows will automatically start making their way to the full layout that we've defined. If we spawn a third window, third window goes here, and now we've got to the full layout that we defined earlier. What I'm saying here is if we window rule a window into the layout, it's going to take up all of the available space like would happen over on a tiling window manager. Now, I know some people do like the fact that they can do empty tiles. Again, I don't think this should be taken away. I don't use them myself, but have both a dynamically generating layout and also manually setting the layout like this. One of the most complicated things with a tiling window manager is defining the layout that you want to use. Generally, it's going to be in code or through some really confusing config. So having a graphical editor for a layout is really, really cool. And you could theoretically do some really cool things with this, but it's just not implemented. I think if Plasma actually wants to do tiling and wants to call it tiling, looking at doing at least some of these things might be a good idea. At a bare minimum, make quick tiling work properly. But I'm sure I'm going to get some very interesting comments, so let me know what you think. Are you a tiling user? Are you a floating user? Do you use something else entirely? I would love to know. So if you like the video, go like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, check out the Patreon, Scrubs, Libero Pay link in the description down below. That's going to be it for me. And someone on the KDE team needs to use a tiling window manager and work out how they actually work. Or just have a look at Cosmic.